Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Courtney Crokey. This is my dog, Lucian. He is a wire-haired Dutch Shepherd, and he will be three in November. Um, there are three different coat types of Dutch Shepherds. There's the short hair, the long hair, and then these guys, the wire hairs. They are very rare. There's only about 500 worldwide, and I believe 47 of those are in the U.S. right now. He, his litter mate, and his uncle are the only three in California right now, and he and his brother live in my house. My roommate owns his brother, Nice Guy Eddie who lives in the house as well and they are brothers in the true sense of yes we're related but we're not we're not gonna really socialize with each other they will deal with each other but that's about it <laughs> i do special effects makeup and the whole reason i got into special effects makeup was because of the movie underworld and the werewolves that were there and i was searching online for dogs one day and i came across a picture of a wire-haired dutch shepherd and i was like oh my god it looks like a werewolf i have to have one of those dogs <laughs> so it took me about a year and a half to find this guy and i knew when i got my wire haired i was going to name him lucian after the first werewolf from underworld that could change form at will so and i already have the name of my second wire haired his name will be william also from the movie underworld <laughs> Um, so yeah, that is how Lucian got his name. <laughs> the breed developed in Holland around uh, 1898. Um, they were originally just an all-purpose farm dog, herding, being with the sheep, keeping them away from the areas they weren't supposed to be in. And to this day, you still find dogs in Holland, you know, being used as general farm dogs. Um, I met um, someone who breeds long hairs, who one of his long hairs is actually on a working cattle ranch right now as a stock dog. Originally with them, they were herders. And so most of the wire hairs these days are just their pets, their family dogs, but there are still working herding dogs. I take him to herding classes and it's fun when you see them actually go and herd. I took him to get temperament tested for herding and he already knew exactly what to do. You just kind of saw that light come on and he just knew how to move with the sheep and it was very cool. But throughout history, they've kind of the wire hairs because the sheep and having the need for that herding dog kind of went down. So did the number of wire hairs, which is why there's so few right now. Um, so right now we're working on just trying to keep the gene pool as large as possible and keep these guys around. Um, Cause anyone who owns one of these, they love them. It's their breed. They're more than likely always going to have one in their house. Um, and so none of us want to see them go. Dutch Shepherds in general, they're very versatile dogs. They're very intelligent. Um, you can pretty much get them to do anything you want them to do with the right motivation. I would say they're just, they're in general, they're very sweet, loving, intelligent dogs that just, they can fit wherever. The difference between a wire haired and the other two coat types would be these guys are, they're very silly. They're very funny. Like a lot of my friends always comment on, he's always so happy because he's just happy doing whatever he's doing. It doesn't matter what he's doing. He's just a happy dog and very energetic. And, but they're also really good at, they got an off button. A typical day with a wire haired would be the second you move in the morning, he's right there at your face. <laughs> he wants to get up and go do something. And so we'll get up and we'll go to take a hike, get him some exercise, let him come home, cool down for a little while. And then he'll just kind of lay around the house and chill out until I have to go to work. And then he goes in his kennel and he'll sleep until I get home. And then it's just kind of lounging around the house until dinner time. He more so the stimulation he gets is from training. He gets more, of the mental wears him out faster than the physical. And so we do training throughout the day. Um, in the morning when we're on the hike, we'll start our hikes with a little obedience and then I'll let him go and then we'll hike. And then when we come back home later on in the day when I get off work, um, I'll do just about 10 minutes of obedience with him. And that works his mind enough that it wears him out more than if I took him on a walk around the block. As far as the protective nature of a wire hair, genetically speaking, they were there to be with the sheep and protect and, you know, mostly hurt, but if need be. And so 
at home, he's not really a protective dog. I'll know if someone's there, but he's not gonna do anything to help me if anything ever <laughs> happened. He let me know they were there as he was running out the back door. <laughs> An appropriate person or family to own a wire-haired Dutch Shepherd. Um, really, pretty much anyone who has a good understanding of dogs and especially a herding breed. Um, like I said, they're very versatile. They can just lay around your house, be a great pet. Um, depending upon the dog, they can be really good around kids. Him, not so much. He's a little too energetic. He kind of knocks them over, um, but he's very sweet to them. Um, but as far as energy level goes, I have only ever seen this dog truly tired one day in his life and that took two very intense hikes and a beach trip all in one day to make him tired. The rest of the time we hike and we'll kind of go out and explore different areas of the city, like we'll have lunch with friends and you know, the mental stimulation he gets works him out, but truly I've only ever seen him tired once and the rest of the time he'll take a quick nap and then he's good to go all over again. <laughs> So the wireheads can live pretty much anywhere as long as they get the proper amount of both mental and physical stimulation. Um, if I lived in an apartment, I'm sure he'd be fine as long as I got him his hikes, I took him to his herding classes. Um, he's more than happy to sleep in his kennel upside down, which is mostly how he sleeps most of the time. Um, just snoozing the day away until it's time to leave the house and go do something and then he turns on and he's ready to go. So they can live pretty much anywhere. But most of the wire hairs I know, they kind of live in rural settings. Um, they've got lots of land and if they go herding or they, you know, live in large state backyards. So, but they're pretty versatile dogs. As far as a Dutch Shepherd inside the house, his brother is more than happy to lay around. He'll just be on you and snuggle and he would spend his entire day like that. This guy, if there's no stimulation happening, he, will, he prefers to lay on the floor with his head under something, like a coffee table or a bed, I don't know why. Um, but I have two cats and if the cats are around, he tends to want to herd and he gets that posture of like wanting to chase the cats and herd the cats. So with him, it's a little bit of a battle of making sure he stays calm inside the house around the cats and knows he can't chase them all the time. Whereas his brother ignores him and would lay around and snuggle all day long. He's very independent and he'll kind of, he'll move around with me throughout the house, but he is not a snuggle dog. He wants to just kind of be on his own and just kind of take things in. If I'm not there, he could go outside and hang outside in the backyard. He deals really well with the cold, with the warmth. Obviously, when it gets too hot or too cold, they come inside. But his brother is very much like he wants to be touching you at all times. So we have both in the house. One of the rough or the, one of the wire hairs is very independent, and the other one is very borderline clingy. Breed Sander would be an independent-minded dog, a dog who can think on its own, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing <laughs> when they decide that there's something they want to do. Um, but they're still very sweet and sensitive dogs. And so on the one hand, his brother fits that very well, a sensitive nature. And on the other hand, he fits it very well because he does have that independent like independent thinking mind and can kind of be on his own without having to be like, oh, where's my human? He's more than happy to be on his own. <laughs> well, anytime we go anywhere, they're kenneled. Well, that's not true, actually. He is kenneled because of the cats. I can't leave him free roaming in the house. Um, his brother will free roam either inside or outside. And they'll, cause they'll hang out in the backyard or his brother will for four or five hours even if we're home. And then if we're home, he's out of the kennel. But if we're not, then he's in the kennel because there's the cats. <laughs> the vast majority of their time is spent inside, just chilling out. Um, but they can easily go outside and just hang in the heat, hang in the cold. Um, they don't have any issues with it. Generally, he is on a kibble diet, but every now and then we will supplement with raw food. Um, whether it be the pre-made um, packages that come in the grinds um, or if it's like raw turkey necks or just chicken breasts or chicken hearts or ground lamb heart or we gave them tripe, which is a big mistake. Never open that indoors. It's very smelly, um, but they love it. And he's 
got a really good stomach, him and his brother both. They do really well in both raw and kibble. Um, but yeah, they tend to pretty much love anything we put in front of them. <laughs> Generally, people go for the wire haired or the long haired or short. They pick their coat type based on what they're using it for. A lot of people, they get the short coats because they're using them for sport work or it's a working dog um, in the sense of like protection or police work. Um, and then someone who's going to pick a wire haired, it's they like the look of them. At least that's why I did it, because <laughs> they look like werewolves. Um, but also just livability with these guys. I mean, the long hairs and the short hairs are the same, like you can live with them very easily. But yeah, I think mostly it's the look and the sweet nature of these guys and kind of the goofiness that comes along with them that is very appealing. Wire hairs have to be hand stripped um, around twice a year. Their coat, this top coat right here, he's actually pretty close to needing to be stripped right now. Um, you basically have to hand pull this top layer off to let the underneath grow, because if you don't, it can actually start causing issues for the dog's skin. He, when I first had him, actually started pulling it out himself because I wasn't getting to it fast enough. So twice a year, he looks like a short-haired Dutch Shepherd because I have to pull all of the top coat off of him and let the undercoat grow out. Lucian is my very first my dog, and while it may seem a little crazy to get a Dutch Shepherd, a wire-haired Dutch Shepherd, as your first dog, I'm very glad I did. This is my breed for life. I will always have one. I would not change a thing. This breed is very rare. Um, so anyone who is looking to get a wire-haired Dutch Shepherd needs to be very serious in doing their research as far as finding the right breeder who health tests, they test the elbows, they test the hips and make sure that their dogs are sound to be bred and find the right breeder for them and find the right puppy for them that's gonna be the right fit so that these guys can stay around. Because there are, I know, there are so few in the world right now and every, like I said, everyone who owns one of these wants to make sure these guys stay around.